Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Able Voices Podcast. I'm Dr. Rhoda Bernard, Founding Managing Director of the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education and Assistant Chair of Music Education, and I am proud to present this podcast featuring disabled artists and arts educators. We are inviting artists with disabilities to be guest hosts for the Able Voices Podcast. The guest host for today's episode is Precious Perez. Precious is a classically trained pop, R&B, and Latin vocalist, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist with a double bachelor's degree in music education and vocal performance from Berklee College of Music. She is also a published children's author. Precious is blind. Her goal is to make a difference through doing what she loves and showing the world that blind people are as capable as everyone else. She hopes to inspire future generations to pursue their dreams and be successful in the same way that she has, because she knows that anything is possible and giving up is never an option. Precious aims to be the first blind Latina artist at the forefront of the Latin music industry. She is confident that she can lead, that she can achieve, and that she can be the one who alters the way people see. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Able Voices podcast. My name is Precious Perez, blind singer, songwriter, and music educator. I'm honored to be your guest host. And today with me, I have John Dowling, singer, songwriter, and country extraordinaire, along with multi-instrumentalist, <laughs> among many other things. Welcome, John. How are you Thank today? Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I am great, man. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for giving me this platform to to share my uh, my work with you guys and you know share who I am and what I'm about. Absolutely. We're excited to hear so much more about you because I know how fantastic you are, but I can't wait for everybody to to really listen to this and see what we all see as your good buddies. So, (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Let's hear a little bit about how you got into music, kind of what kickstarted that, what your focuses are, how you got where you are today. Sure. Yeah. So um, my music journey really started when I was about four or five um it started it all revolved around a uh, a piano that was at one of my uh my aunt's houses and uh no one no one ever played it, it just kind of sat in the corner uh collecting dust and i was the only one that would go up to it occasionally and and push keys and i would hear sounds coming out of it and i was like oh that that sounds really neat and uh i discovered that uh you know if i had keys in the right combinations and i could make uh different different sounds and uh it just kind of started from there and uh eventually i would uh own that piano and i still have it in my possession to this day um and uh it's it's been good to me over these these last uh you know 18 17 years um and i actually just got it retuned a couple years ago and it sounds sounds great awesome so you're super great at piano we know this yeah, but what other instruments do you play? Because you play yeah. a lot of random I things, do. and you record. Yeah. He records his own arrangements and like does all the instrumentation, all these different things. So, um, I want to hear a little bit about all the instruments you play and what kind of softwares you use to kind of t- dabble in all of those areas. Yeah, yeah, man. So after the piano, because um, I kind of want to go in, in in sequential order, um, I I had discovered that my neighbor uh, at the time um was also a musician and so he he kind of took me under his wing uh for a short time and he kind of showed me a little bit around the the piano um and then he he also he gave me a a ukulele as a uh as a present one year i think i was maybe seven or eight at the time um and i think that's how my love for string instruments really kind of kicked off although i guess you could say the the piano is a string instrument technically but uh string instruments that you that you play (laughs) with your fingers um (laughs) But yeah, so besides the ukulele, uh, I play the harmonica as well. Uh, I play the the banjo, the mandolin. Um, I do some key drumming uh, with with mini drums and software on my computer. Uh, uh, and speaking of software, I use uh, Native Instruments Complete Control uh, software, and I have the S sixty one Mark II keyboard, which is a a sixty one key mini keyboard. And then I use Logic uh, Logic Pro, and I have a 
iMac, uh, 2019 iMac, and it's it's a pretty decent spec machine. Um, and I've been using I've been using Mac OS since about 2014, but I've been using Logic since maybe 2016 or 17. So I've been I've been doing it for for a couple years now. Yeah, just a little while, you know, no yeah. big deal. It's <laughs> yeah, really right. awesome too because all of the things that you're mentioning, Logic, Native Instruments, OS, all of these things are accessible. Yeah. With voiceover and yep. you know, I know Native Instruments and and you know things like Pro Tools have come a long way oh, in terms yeah, of accessibility dude. for yep. blind people. For sure, um, for sure. And Logic too, like it's built in accessibility, which is fantastic. Yeah. And things are just getting better, like with notation software. Sibelius is now accessible on the Mac. Different things. Like oh, that's that, which cool! Is fantastic. Wow. So there's a that's lot awesome. of different options yeah. out there for anybody looking to kind of pursue these different aspects of musicality and music. Yeah. Um, speaking of disability and accessibility, um, okay. as a blind musician, how has your accessibility played a role in your musicianship and just in general in what you do? Oh, man. Well, you know, it's it's crazy. But, like, I, I always remember as a kid, people would always say, oh, you need to advocate for yourself. You need to, av- you know, advocate for yourself. And I just kind of took it like, oh, okay, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll – you know, I'll, I'll listen to what they have to say, but I never really took it seriously until I really started to notice how there were certain software, you know, pieces of software that weren't accessible. And I feel like no one was really taking the time to kind of speak up and say, Hey, you know, this isn't working, you know, working for us. So I kind of started, uh, you know, trying to reach out to, to companies and, you know, I would give feedback, um, on their, uh, their accessibility and they would usually, um, I've had some success with, um, you know, uh, accessibility, uh, getting, getting changed and, uh, you know, my suggestions actually getting, getting through and getting heard. Um, this isn't exactly music related, but, uh, there's a, a company called Rogue Amoeba and they make, uh, stuff like audio hijack and, uh, loopback, um, nice. which are, are, uh, you know, audio recording software and, and cable routing software. It's kind of like a virtual audio cable in windows. Um, and there was a feature uh, that I wanted to see in Audio Hijack, which is the uh, the recorder, and that was the ability to uh, record in in FLAC, and uh, which is kind of a weird uh, format. Not a lot of people would you know would use it, but uh, I'm kind of a weird guy, so um, I I contacted them and I was like, <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> do you think you could uh, you know do this? And they were like, yeah, sure, we'll see what we can do. And then in the next release, uh, they added they added FLAC support. So I was like, wow, that. I, they actually took what I said seriously. Damn. Um, and you know, That's so that, that, fantastic. that felt really cool. Um, and ever since then, I've really kind of tried to take the, uh, take the lead when it comes to, um, you know, accessibility and, uh, making things a lot easier for us, uh, blind and visually impaired users, or even just, you know, anyone in general, you know, cause that, that, who knows that, that feature might've helped somebody, you know, who, who likes to record and lost this audio like Flack or, or something like that absolutely man yeah. i need to i need to pick your brain about um <laughs> logic and things because you know i learned on pro tools so for me it's like really hard to switch <laughs> yeah yeah um, i got you but i really would love to to pick your brain about um loop back and stuff because i know that yeah, you know when you're playing and doing virtual performances and stuff being able to really hear what you're doing at the same time is something that you can't really do unless you have those yeah so and we gotta that, that, talk we gotta talk <laughs> yeah, man, and, that, and and like that's also why I love macOS so much is because of the fact that if you want to, like, if I wanted to, um, I could take this Mac out with me when I do live gigs, and I could bring my little keyboard and and I could have access to all these different instruments, and there would be zero yeah. latency, you know. Even yeah. um, and it's it's you know I'm not, I'm not trying to you know diss Windows or anything, but it seems like Mac really has the uh, the, the the upper hand when it comes to uh, yeah versatility to for sure. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So we're going to hear an excerpt of a piece of music from John. So John, why don't you tell us about the first excerpt we're going to hear? Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm going to kind of go uh, newest recording first and then uh, then the oldest one. So the newest recording that I'm going to uh, be sharing with you guys is one that I recorded about, I'd say maybe two, three weeks ago. Um, I was listening to, uh, I think I was listening to an my Apple Music, my, cause you know how Apple Music used to your personalized station. Yeah. Uh, and I was listening to it and uh, I heard the song coming on. I was like, man, this is a really, 
really neat song. It's called uh, it's called Ride My Son to Mexico by a guy named Johnny Rodriguez, and uh, he was an older uh, older country singer back in the the sixties. And uh, I was like, you know what? I I I want to record this, so I uh, I, I laid down some some uh, some bass and some drums, and uh, I put some pedal steel in there. And uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's a song. It's called uh, Ride My Thumb to Mexico, and I really really enjoy it. It's a it's a great song. This old highway seems so lonesome when you're going where you've been. And a lonesome song can make you cry time and time again. If I didn't listen to a friend of mine ten years ago today, I'd have a better job than what I got today. But the billboards on the highways and the brake lights on the cars make me jump out on the highway with my bag and my guitar. If she comes or if she goes, it doesn't Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Such talent, honestly. All those instruments and the vocals. Always the vocals for me, Yeah, honestly. Yeah, man. Um, so we're going to hear another excerpt. Tell us about the second piece you're going to share with everyone. Yeah, sure. So I made this this piece in uh, let's see, I think it was it was in May of 2021 because this is when I uh, uh, had uh, saved up enough money to buy a uh, a new studio microphone. I I at the time I purchased I purchased the uh, the Shure SM7B and I was kind of playing around with that because uh, I I loved the way that that thing sounds and. Uh, so I recorded. Uh, that was one. Of the, this this was probably the first recording I did with the uh, the microphone. That was a uh, a Stonewall Jackson song. And uh, after I recorded it, I kind of just forgot about it. You know, I didn't really post it anywhere, like to my YouTube or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in December, um, on December fourth, uh, I found out that Stonewall Jackson had passed away. Um, and I think it was uh, in his in his nineties at least. And I was like. Wow, that's you know what 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 a what an icon. So I uh, I posted it to my YouTube as kind of a tribute to him, and uh, this is a song. It's called "Why I'm Walking." I got my angel on my mind. That's why I'm walking. There's such an ache in this old. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. Uh, the SM7B is my dream microphone, but yeah, uh, I, I'm, I can't pay for that right now. One day, <laughs> one day we're going to do it. Uh, yeah, man. But that's amazing quality. Um, you yeah, have all dude. the top notch things. And what's cool is that you have the ability to do all of this just from where you're at. Like you're not yeah. in a quote unquote professional, professional studio, studio, but it studio, sounds yeah. so good. Yeah, um, no, I, And I, I that am... speaks to your craft and to your <laughs> musicianship and just like your passion. For sure. Yeah, we dude. Can definitely yeah. Hear it come through. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm. I'm very blessed that I, uh, you know, that we have this technology. I mean, I remember when I was six years old, I was playing with a little Yamaha keyboard, and uh, it wasn't anything, you know, to to write about. I didn't even have a little, you know, a multi track recorder, and it was just a yeah. just a straight up little keyboard. And uh, and I just remember thinking to myself, man, I wish I could, you know, record some music and play it back. And here, here I am. You know, it's like full circle, man. It's crazy. Like, I mean, if if six year old me knew that, you know, I would be doing that, I I don't know what what he would do. He'd probably think it was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I feel the same way. It's like when you look back and see how far you've come from where you started. Yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. You think about yeah, it, like, man. I remember when I couldn't sing this song, or when I couldn't play yeah. this thing, or you know, I remember when I didn't know how to use this. 
And it's, it's a really cool feeling for sure, growth and being able to really share what you do and your passion with people and really make people happy. And I know that's something that's really, really high um, on your list of goals for you is really just to make people happy and share. Yeah, man. Yeah, for and sure. And you do that all sure. the time. All yeah. the time. <laughs> Thank you, man. So you. I want to know, you've mentioned some really important nuggets of wisdom as far as accessibility and shared a lot about what's available for blind and visually impaired users out there yeah um, yeah who are looking to get into music and to really start uh playing around with whether it's producing or making instrumentals or whatever the case may be what yeah. advice would you have for musicians with disabilities uh, in general overall well um i i i think really the the most important thing to to say is to not let your your disability uh, become a, a barrier uh, between you and your your craft. You know, don't let you know your blindness or your you know if you're in a wheelchair, or, you know what have you. Don't let that stop you from uh, from reaching your your goals and dreams because uh, it it can happen, man. You know, if with with, with the with the right uh you know positivity and and if you just if you just think positive and you keep those 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 positive vibes going, man, it will. It will happen. You just have to keep uh, keep at it. Absolutely, day by day, moving forward in positive vibes. We love to mm -hmm. hear it. We love to hear it. Yeah. So before before we wrap up, tell yeah. everyone where they can find John Dowling and John Dowling's music and everything else. Yeah, man. So you can uh, you can check me out on Apple Music and Spotify, and uh, other places like Pandora and wherever other songs are found uh, under the. Artist named John Dowling Jr. And uh, Dowling is spelled D O W L I N G. Fantastic. Well, thank you for being here today, John. It's been such an honor to really share this with you and give you the ability to share what you do and your vibrant spirit and words of wisdom with everybody today. So thank you. Yeah, man, of course. And actually, I, I do have one more uh, one more thing. It's kind of a, a plug, I guess, if you will. Um, Go for it. If, if you are a blind musician and uh, you're, you live uh, here in the U.S. Um, and you're, you receive SSI uh, benefits, you can actually uh, – there's a, uh, a program you can sign up for. It's called the, the Able Artists Foundation. And uh, they can actually send you discounts uh, based on, um, you know, if you use – software instruments um and like different uh libraries you can you can get discounts uh to receive uh receive them at a cheaper price which is really cool fantastic i need to look into that too thank you for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah man awesome well thank you for being here john it's been an honor to host another episode of the able voices podcast please stay tuned and this concludes this episode See you later. Able Voices is a production of the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education, led by me, Dr. Rhoda Bernard, the founding managing director. It is produced by Daniel Martinez del Campo. The intro music is by Kai Levin, and our closing song is by Sebastian Batista. Kai and Sebastian are students in the arts education programs at the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education. If you would like to learn more about our work, find us online at berkeley.edu slash B-I-A-A-E or email us at B-I-A-A-E at berkeley, that's L-E-E -E, dot E-D-U.